Carla Buderak and welcome to Behavior Communicates. Today's episode is on the incredible five point scale by Carrie Dunn Byrne. And if you have not heard of this concept yet, you are missing out because this is a sweet tool that I use all the time. It has many uses once you understand the basics. So let me show you the concept and then I have several examples to show you. The five point scale is simply a visual way to show five levels of something. You can sit down with your child and decide what each level means. This, for instance, is a voice meter that's set up that the level one is a whisper, level two would be a little louder, level three would be a conversational voice, like an inside voice that I'm using right now, level four would be louder than an inside voice, and level five would be screaming or loud talking that's appropriate for outside. What I like about this is I often use a paper clip that I can go up and down the voice meter and I can show a student or a child, for instance, if they're working in groups, that they need to be at a level one. Or if it's okay for them to be talking in a normal conversational voice, I can leave the paper clip at a number three. This is also nice to show a student that they're at a level five and it's way too loud, they need to bring it down to a level three. Once your child gets used to this, you could just simply refer to the colors. You need to be at a yellow, or you can use the numbers. You're at a five and you need to be at a three. Now think about this. Shrink this down to a small size triangle that you could actually put in your purse, in the car, in your pocket, uh, on a student's desk, and it would be much more available than something this size. You could even put it on a pen with the colors to show volume control and other things that I'm going to show you in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look at the five point scale when we're dealing with anger, levels of anger. So I have my five point scale here with the colors and the numbers and next to it I've actually put faces for what this looks like. Now you can draw your own faces or you can have your child draw their faces of what they think these levels look like. And the next is, how does this feel? So you and your child can come up with some wording on how these different levels feel. For instance, this level is, I feel great, I feel okay and I can keep working, and I'm starting to get a little annoyed and I need a break. When my kids get to this point, I have them to do, uh, put the brakes on and go straight to a strategy under the column of how can I respond. So we have brainstormed ideas on what a child can do when they're feeling way too anxious. Do they take a break? Do they work on the computer? Do they take a walk? Whatever the strategy is and how they can respond, that's what you can put in there. Also, what I've done with a child uh, in elementary school is I took his interest in dinosaurs and we made a five point scale based on the level of aggression in dinosaurs. So he helped me come up with various levels of dangerous or aggressive dinosaurs and he helped me go from something very not aggressive in his opinion way up to a T-Rex. He knew what these levels were, I knew what these levels were, so he knew that when he got up to a brontosaurus he had to go straight to a procedure to calm down so that he could keep his anger level below where it needed to be. Now let's look at the five point scale when we deal with friendship. You can sit down with your child and define each level for yourselves. For instance, I just put down level one. This is where people are kind to you. They're honest. They don't get you in trouble. You do nice things for them. They do nice things for you, that kind of thing. Um, level two, someone says hi. They might hang out with you. They still don't get you in trouble. Maybe they're not as close as a level one, but they're still friends. Level three, maybe they say hi to you when you're outside at the mall, in the hallway, but you don't really hang out. You don't really get invited to anything with them, but they're still nice people. Level four, this is the uh, danger zone when they start asking you to do things for them, buy things for them, and they don't reciprocate that behavior. They might say unkind things for you, or they might ask you to break school rules or family rules. And number five, this is when um, it gets really serious that they're definitely not your friends when they're asking you to break the law where you um, are involving weapons, um, drugs, alcohol, destroying property, or hurting someone. Certainly that is not friendship, and um, our kids need to know what that looks like. 
I had a situation with a little boy in middle school who happened to have Down syndrome and the popular boys of the school invited him to sit at their table in the cafeteria. Well, they weren't really offering him friendship. What they were doing was basically using him. They asked him to go over and say sexually inappropriate things to the girls and when he would do it, um, they would laugh and, and then this little guy thought that he was being accepted into their group and he thought it was great. Well, what we had to do then is sit down with him with the five point scale and let him know that these boys were asking him to do a level four or a level five behaviors and they certainly were not offering friendship. They were using him and they were not being appropriate. So this really helped him see that these boys were definitely not his friends. And finally, I want to give you one last example that I think is very, very important. Carrie Dunburn also actually wrote a book called Five is Against the Law because she thought it was important enough to make it a book just in itself. But I want to show you basically what that is. Um, again, the five point scale. Our kids sometimes think that wrong is wrong and all the things that you can do wrong all have the same value and that's just not true. So sometimes we might need to use the five point scale to let them know that some things are a little bit wrong like making a mess and not cleaning up or borrowing something from someone that you know without permission or things are really wrong that involve drugs, alcohol, weapons, destruction of property and hurting someone. And this way you can take them up the scale and show them what level of wrong that they might be doing and what the consequences might be if they do these things. You can see Carrie Dunburn's book Five is Against the Law at Autism Asperger's Publishing Company, and I have a link to that on my resource page. You go to that link, click on, and it'll take you to the website. You can take a look at all of her products involving the incredible five-point scale. Thank you for joining me here at Behavior Communicates, where I help you and your child or your student get what you both really want and what you really need. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and all your other media. And if you have not signed up for Behavior Communicates, please get on over and then sign up and you'll get weekly updates just like this. I'll see you next time.